Hi, my name is Sebastian and in this coding session we're gonna be coding together. So I got this idea because I had a few comments on my channel that people said well they would actually like to watch me coding and use a certain tools and some shortcuts and all of that stuff how I usually am in my coding flow and I thought yeah why not that's actually a fun idea so let's code together the quite uh, typical or well-known song of 99 bottles of beer, this coding challenge that I will uh, show in a second. But the point is not how to solve that particular uh, coding question or that coding exercise, but more like what certain uh, tools and approaches I use and maybe you get inspired to use certain shortcuts or to just look more into a certain way of doing things. And of course, at the end, you will get some more pointers on which tools I'm using, which shortcuts and so on. So what I will be doing is the following code exercise. So the exercise will be write a Java method that emits the typical 99 bottles of beer song as an array. So with each line of the song as one array element and the song goes like that. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around and then you take the same number and decrement it by one. And then that song goes on for a long, long, long time. And at the end, that song is a little bit different. Take one down, pass it around, one bottle, singular of beer. And then no more bottles of beer, go to the sh store, buy some more. So that's pretty much it. And how to solve that? Well, in a Java way. So what I will do now is I will just code this together with you and I will start from scratch that you see everything. And also I didn't properly prepare this or anything. I will just have to probably look up some stuff as well and Google things around. But I think that's pretty much the point of such a video of just showing you more the real world process. Not really a polished video, but just something that uh, shows you how I do things. What I typically do is that, let's call this bottles of beer, that I have some scripts and helpers that just help me setting up some Maven projects and things like that. So usually I don't use Maven archetypes or some you know more, more sophisticated things. Why? I think that's more pragmatic to use, well, shell scripts for a certain uh, number of things. So that just uh, creates some uh, Maven structure with a recent uh, Java version of just a, a Java jar. Uh, project and well the same you see for starting my idea um, and then we can have a look how to solve this so this is just a plain maven project uh, I will code uh, a Java method as the um, exercise says and I of course use IDE my IntelliJ IDE let's have a look at the palm XML so this is you see just um, importing the project right away has no dependencies yet Java 16 and now let's write this so bottles of beer and then I will just create a new let's wait uh, for the IDE to wake up let's create a new class bottles of beer and then this will just emit um, these song lines so something like I don't know let's that's supposed to be an array with the um, lines as an array element so something like uh, uh, produce song and that will just emit it what I do typically quite quickly is to, uh, just to create a test for it and this is actually because that's a non-trivial way to create that also what I want to start with so that is just supposed to create um, a test for it when we're talking about tests of course I have to have some uh, JUnit dependencies so this is a um, well just some live templates that I created for for that matter. This is going to be using JUnit or SRJ. I don't know if I need Mokito, but that's typically in that list. And then I say, well, I have just one test actually of, of testing, you know, the whole song. So this will literally be, there's no uh, parameter or anything. I could think of another exercise where I can actually use the um, like number of lines as parameters or, or which number to start with, but not in this one. So let's just uh, test this right here. What I will actually do, because I think it makes sense, is just to create a very static test. Because now if you think about it, well, if I create the test in such a way that it's very clever and dynamic to produce this outcome, then, you know, it's, it's already the solution for the problem. So it's, you know, that's, that's kind of like chicken and egg. So what I will start with is just a test that 
takes the the fully lyrics the full lyrics from something like a text file or a csv is sometimes used in test and and just use that and then test my code against it um so yeah let's what i use uh quite often is just a vim approach actually and this is a much more uh, versatile tool that you um might might think or or um uh, or think of it usually because let's say I have source main resources. Plain Vim is a little bit more powerful even than the idea of Vim plugin. Uh, source main resources or test resources, lyrics, let's call this text. And now I will just create these lyrics here. So from these, I will just take, let's say the first one, the first two lines of code and put them here. And now I'm gonna just create that in such a way. What I'm going to do now, and for that matter, let me quickly show my um, keyboard overlay. So here it is. And with that, you see which keys I'm, show, um, I'm pressing. Because typically what I would like to use is a little bit of Vim tricks that make such a task easier. So for example, if you use Vim, actually, and this is also something I just uh, discovered recently, you can use arithmetics, like sim uh, simple ones. If I say um, I press, I think it's control X, yes, uh, control X for decrementing and control A for incrementing, it will just take the next number and actually, well, increment it. It's, yeah, sounds funny, but this works. And we're gonna use this feature here to just, well, produce these 99 lines of, um, of text and then the other ones. So what we're gonna do, and this is a very powerful feature, we're gonna use recording. So I press QA, now it says recording into register A. And what I do is, well, take this line, copy and paste it. Now press Control X to decrement it. Now jump to the next comma or something like this, press that again. And now go to the start of the line and press recording um, again. So now that small step is finished. And now if I say um, um, it's an at sign and an A or the register, now I can do this here, which is already faster. And now I can say, well, do this, for example, 80 times, 808A uh, at A. And now 10 more times, just I want to do this step by step to be um, um, to be uh, safer. So now we already have the first uh, line and then that's the next one. So I just uh, switched this down and what I want to do, I want to insert this as well and then of course also decrement it accordingly so that it matches. So for that reason, I'm gonna have another recording, QB. I could also overwrite the other one. I'm gonna uh, copy this line go one down, then paste it, then it's down again, and again, um, control X to decrement this. So now it's, it was 80, um, 98, and now it's 97. And now press Q again, and now do this again with at B. And you see 96, 95, 94, and so on and so forth. And now I can do this again for, um, what's that, I think, 85 times I just want to be sure always that I that I count correctly otherwise it will produce other issues something like this take it down pass it around one bottles of beer that's singular now one bottle of beer that's that and now I can just go and take this one copy and paste it in here as well and that should be it. Take it down, pass it around, one bottle of beer, one bottle of beer, take it down, pass it around, no more bottles of beer, and that's it. Go to the start. So that's the whole just text being created. So this is just a preparation, but again, I wanted to show you like the whole, um, whole idea. So this is what I do and what I use in projects very, very often. Like Vim is uh, just my Swiss army knife of just <laughs> changing some text or creating some JSON or whatever. This is really, really practical if you're a little bit fluent in, in Vim already. And what I now have is I created this file that I can open in my IDE as well. And then I can use this actually in my tests. So now I can say this would be something like, 
files of beer test get a class resource get resource like um, this as stream resources uh, as stream here and then I can load it that's gonna be a slash resources lyrics text and then I could go um, file this something I think files lines or something like that from a no from a path or oh, does this also work with a then I will actually use a path to take the lines of uh, code here so get a resource into a URL, get path, and then read this into lines of code. So that's gonna, no, not wrap the argument, but basically a path of, let's see what this takes. This takes, that is a path here. Oh, that's a string, so we can use path of that will work or it doesn't to path okay get path and then wrap it into path of I don't even know if that's the most oh yeah now IntelliJ uh, requires none now no that's not important Files of beer okay so IntelliJ helps a lot here now we're gonna throw the exception I don't care about that and now we can say well actually take these lines of code and then invoke the actual bottles of beer instance so that's gonna be a, a new bottles of beer this class under test and then bottles of beer produce the song and just assert that this song um, contains so that's it should be something like this contains exactly elements of yes of the lines I think that's gonna be it that's oh that's a stream I don't want the stream I actually want lines as list uh, read all lines that's it from this path and that's gonna be a list of string And then we can just test this here. And now I'm just going to implement that. Um, return this empty array, which of course will fail. But now I want to uh, see. Now I'm going to execute it in IntelliJ. I'm going to run this test. And then we will see that this fails. But I want to see that already the test is somewhat correct, that it says, OK, expect that that these this array contains these lines. And this looks good because I want every line to be an array entry. So that says what my exercise wanted to have. And at the end, two bottles, one bottle, singular, take one down, no more bottles, no more bottles, go to the store. Looks good. OK, so that's pretty much the exercise. So we already have a test for it, thanks to this lyrics text file. OK, now what's next? Now let's actually have um, a, a proper solution or let's think about a solution. But you see already what I want to do. I want to write this test, uh, first of all, to just um, be sure that then we can write some code and maybe we can refactor it and, and so on. So first of all, and I really start from a naive approach because I also um, I also don't know. Um, let's have a look. So I would like to count down from 99. So this should be from 99. Here the text changes. So we could do, for example, two. And then here singular or solve this otherwise. Let's start with um, is more than one, two. And then what I would like to have, I want to, I think the easiest is to have a, um, a list of string which will be the lines and then usually I would uh, take an array list now I actually take a link list just because I want to add all the time and I would li literally want to link it I hope that makes sense from a Java perspective and now I say something like um, this to start with and then it's something like I bottles of beer on the wall I bottles of beer or I think it's nicer to have a string format, something like um, digit bottles of beer on the wall, digit bottles of beer. 
and then use the i twice here and then take one down pass it around something like uh, this take one down pass it uh, around bottles of beer on the wall yes something like that lines add so this already gives us uh, everything up to one and then what we might uh, use is like for the last so this is still being printed then we could say well don't print this because this text won't match so let's assume that i want to have this just like um, independently and then we can um, then we can pretty much uh, look into that so let's say if the i is more um, is two or no actually more than two otherwise this would be yes we uh, forgot one thing this must be minus uh, one or actually this must be i minus one so we could use this or i can use a separate counter and just decrement it but this should be fine so then we have this and then at the end take one down pass it around I can actually now one bottle of beer because this is going to be the end of the song so I can just write it as such and then say take one down pass it around and it might be even as uh, quick as said saying do this something like that take one down pass it around one uh, bottle of beer so this should already um, be something like this. What is it complaining? Executes zero a billion times. Yes, of course, not plus plus, but minus minus. There we go. And then at the end, I want something like return lines to array. I think that's string array new, something like that. Yeah, it looks good. All right, I actually don't know. If that works as expected, let's have a look. So this is just like one idea that I had because of the, oh, wow. So this was unexpected. Um, what I was uh, thinking once I saw the singular that this is producing problems because otherwise, if I take um, count to, to one, then here I have to distinguish whether it's like plural or singular, and then um, I have to change this from there. So I would say that's already a somewhat valid solution. So we can uh, take this one, uh, produce song, or um, have an alternative solution. So I, I take this first um, to say, I would say that's valid. Um, but if we want to be a little bit more clever um, and say, okay, like the bottles of beer and then no more bottles of beer, that we could somewhat generalize the what we call bottles. So for example, saying, that this would be not a digit, but like a string. Bottles, no more bottles of beer, one bottle of beer. So something of beer, depending on, let's call this just beer, depending on uh, how many we have. And then um, we have a method that we create down here that we call private, that's not an object, it's a string, depending on the, the number or the count. And then, here I can just uh, say a very basic if the count is more than uh, more than one then just return um, so and so many bottles of beer um, if it is exactly one um, say it's well one bottle or just say it's well now we also have to think about it it's no more bottles but here there is no more <laughs> no more bottles so here it, uh, it would be uppercase so that also uh, creates creates an issue if we say well take this but then in the first uh, example make uh, make it uppercase no more bottles so otherwise this uh, this might uh, might be a challenge let's see what we what we do here um, but more bottles but that might help already. Okay, let's start here. Take one down, pass it around. Um, beer, 
of so and so and that's gonna be not a digit but a string something of beers something of beer take one down pass it around now I could potentially get rid of this and get rid of this and saying it's up until one more bottle of beer one more bottle of beer take one down pa pass it around okay now get rid of these two as well then it should be until um, zero if I'm not taking more than zero and then it's zero here once I say minus one and yeah, that looks good no more bottles of beer and then I use this okay now I didn't parameterize this one because that's also uppercase and I think it doesn't give me something more yeah so that might be another solution here as well okay that's it so what do you think is there some other possibility to further optimize it I'm not sure otherwise the question is if it's more readable so now I think it's actually more readable than before we generalized it a little bit that we say how many bottles of beer now here it might be tricky if we also try to generalize that then it might be something like well we would need to insert yet another method that capitalizes the first um, character but I don't think that it buys you much but also because here you have to count differently so probably it's going to be more more code or more complexity what I like now that there is uh, less um, cyclomatic complexity because the, we we got rid of the if and well we basically outsourced it here but that's more readable because of the kind of like abstraction layer if you want to think about it that way so anyway I think that's a um, nice solution so what we used in this coding session was uh, IntelliJ and Java 16 of course then I used some Vim tricks to just uh, create that test for our exercise and while well, some other of course the usual um, the usual suspects in the IDE uh, modification that I use of course idea Vim for uh, movements and then all the typical refactoring actions live templates and so on if you're interested um, a little bit more in how to get more effective on working with uh, with these things I can point you to a masterclass that I have available as on-demand uh, video courses that right now works as an early access available because it's not quite uh, ready yet maybe that's something that helps you and other than that I hope that was helpful thanks a lot for watching if you enjoyed this I would really appreciate if you'll like the video bye